A family from East Yorkshire say that they're being frustrated in their efforts to offer safety to a family fleeing the war in Ukraine. Sabrina O'Brien and her family in Driffield have already offered two spare rooms in their home to a teacher and her two daughters who have escaped the fighting and are now refugees in Moldova. Sabrina hoped that they'd be in East Yorkshire by now, but she's still waiting for the government to give details of how they can sponsor the Ukrainian family. Our correspondent Amri Tusker has this report. Like many families here, Sabrina O'Brien, her husband Tony and their children have donated items to send to refugees fleeing the war in Ukraine. But unlike most of us, they're also planning to open up their home in Driffield. It can be any of us, you know, we could be the family trying to flee and reach out to people, strangers, and as a family we just wanted to do what we could. I was watching the news with children down in the subway, wrapped in blankets, playing on their phones, and it literally brought me to tears because I could see myself in their situation and we're just lucky to be living in a place like Driffield. After seeing pictures of the invasion last week, Sabrina made contact online with a family who'd fled from the town of Vinitsia before it came under Russian fire. Hello. Hello. Dobre den. Dobre den. <laughs> oh, dobre den. Lily is an English teacher and, like hundreds of others, has travelled over the border to Moldova with her two daughters, Victoria and Iona but is worried about their future. At the moment, um, um, thanks God, we have still money. Yes, we can. We are able to buy some food for them. I just can't imagine when this money run away and what will I do next? Uh, I will go and ask for a piece of bread. Uh, I just want them to feel happy in a safe place. They don't want to leave their country, but they have to. She was talking to me last night saying, you know, we've never flown anywhere. What do we do? you know, your whole life trying to put it into a suitcase. It's just devastating, really. Fuel's running out, and this is going to be a challenge. Can they get to the airport? Because they're not going to be able to refuel their car, and they're needing it to get food, which they can only buy three days a week. So even though they're away from the actual bombing, they're not away from the danger. The government website telling people how to sponsor Ukrainian refugees so far only gives information on how to sign up for email alerts. Today, the Department for Leveling Up has told us it will be setting out more details on the scheme soon. The government has to either relax the situation or accelerate the process because, you know, lives are actually at risk. Lives could be lost because of bureaucracy or red tape. Lily is sending videos and messages daily. I like you look. But Sabrina's family hoped by now they'd be sharing their home. Anne-Marie Tasker, BBC Look North, Driffield. Let's just hope that uh, Sabrina will be uh, sharing our home uh, very soon. It's one thing, isn't it, to uh, donate clothes or money, but it's another thing to take in a family or a person. Would you be prepared to take refugees into your home? What have you done uh, so far for uh, those who are fleeing Ukraine? What would you do? Um, as I said, we'd love to hear from you on this one. Have you uh, offered, would you offer, taking a refugee, your stories, your views, as always, the email address is there, Look north at bbc.co.uk. Text number 81333, 81 text will come straight uh, to us, or follow me on Twitter, tweet now, and I'll get it straight away here in the studio. It's now two weeks since Russia invaded Ukraine and the desire to help those fleeing the war shows no sign of letting up. More than £150 million has been raised by the Emergency Disasters Committee while lorry loads of clothes, bedding and medical supplies continue to make their way from East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire to Eastern Europe. Caroline Bilton has this report. Donations of hope now fill boxes. Hundreds of boxes collected in just two days in Hull. The support has been unbelievable. We've literally filled this warehouse to the rafters. Today we're going to send a load out to Romania. This collection has been organised by the charity Hull for Heroes. I'll do you, Dave. Straight enough, that's one. Two weeks in and this wave of help shows no signs of waning. It's just constant and constant and constant. It seems that where is all the stuff coming from even? But it is, and it's, it keeps coming, and people are just 
the, the tone, aren't they? They just want to do something and we want to help them do something. This is where the donations are headed, Romania, where thousands of Ukrainians now find themselves homeless. A Romanian church is helping to make sure it gets to where it's needed. This lorry will get to Siret and from there the pastor will, uh, will take the donations and, and will help with the refugees and he can go across into Ukraine uh, and can help uh, into Ukraine. This is all sorted. This is for the next truck. Warehouses filled with donations are starting to empty as journeys begin. This collection in Holbeach by the Boxes of Hope charity will leave for Ukraine tomorrow. In Lincoln today, at the university, help didn't come in boxes, but in monetary donations from students and the offer of a continuation of life for those who have left theirs behind. As of this morning, we've had one student who's had to flee uh, Ukraine, who had to give up their journalism course uh, in Ukraine, and we're in the process of registering them onto our journalism and photography course here at Lincoln. Uh, we're looking at ways we can support them when they arrive, looking at ways we can provide accommodation. And we'll be doing the same for academics, uh, who can also benefit from being part of an academic community. Back in Hull, and the emotions of so many are in here. The volunteers, some ex-military themselves, tell me how it's been hard to bear at times. Very emotional. Baby clothes, baby food, baby nappies, it's just babies and toddlers. It's very emotional. And that's just loaded, but we're going to carry on this afternoon, do some more boxes, get them all ready for the next one. Like so many, they will continue as long as people want to help. Caroline Bilton, BBC Look North, Hull.